Today we're gonna to be whipping together some wholesome meals that are perfect for lunch or dinner. These recipes were meant to be really easy. I think on average we whip them together in about 20 minutes or so. So they're really quick, filling, comforting, fresh, tasty, nutritious of course. I wanna take a brief moment to thank Wix as well for partnering with us on today's video. They are the amazing platform that we use to create the whole Pickup Limes website, but I'm gonna chat more about them at the end. For now, we're gonna get started on making the recipes. The first recipe we're gonna make is this incredibly delicious veggie noodle stir fry with a creamy peanut lime sauce. It's a dish loaded with a variety of rainbow colored veggies. So we're gonna begin by cooking 125 grams of dry noodles according to the package instructions. Here we used chow mein noodles, but you could also use ramen, brown rice, or soba noodles. And while this cooks, we're gonna finely mince two shallots, doing the same to two cloves of garlic. We're then gonna add this to a pan on medium-high heat with a bit of oil and cook it for a couple minutes. You can add a splash of water if needed to deglaze the pan. We're then gonna thinly slice two medium bell peppers. We used a red one and a yellow one. And once it's all sliced, we can then cut it again in half lengthwise. Yeah. We're then gonna peel and cut two carrots into thin matchsticks, or alternatively, you could shred them. And then we're gonna add this all to the pot along with about a cup of shredded purple cabbage just to add a pop of color. Cook this for two minutes until it's just heated up, cooked through, but still crunchy. So while that all cooks, we're gonna prepare the peanut lime sauce by adding three tablespoons spoons of peanut butter to a jar or bowl. You can substitute it for tahini or almond butter if you're allergic or don't like peanut butter. We're then gonna add the juice from one lime, one and a half tablespoons each of sodium reduced soy sauce and sesame oil, a tablespoon of hoisin and sriracha hot sauce or other mild hot sauce, and half of a tablespoon of agave syrup. We're then gonna shake it or mix it until it's all well combined and creamy. When the noodles are cooked, we're gonna drain it and then add it to the pan of vegetables. We're gonna pour over the sauce and toss everything to combine. Once you've served some of the noodles for yourself into a bowl or on a plate, you can then top it with a generous amount of roasted cashews and some fresh thinly sliced scallions, some sliced red chilies or cilantro. This recipe is one of Robin's new favorites. He's asking me to make it for him all the time. He likes it when it's hot. I actually think the dish tastes really good if you enjoy it cold. So you can choose whichever you think you might prefer and it keeps really well in the fridge too so you can enjoy it as leftovers as well. For this next recipe, we're gonna be making this refreshing quinoa and chickpea summer salad with a zesty roasted garlic dressing. We're gonna first preheat the oven to 200 Celsius or 290 Fahrenheit, and then we're gonna cut the head off of a bulb of garlic, transfer it to a baking dish, and pour over about a teaspoon of oil. Then roast it for 15 to 20 minutes or until it's lightly golden. Meanwhile, we're gonna cook one cup of dry quinoa according to the package instructions. And once it's cooked, this is gonna make about two cups worth of cooked quinoa. To a large bowl, we're gonna add a cup of cooked chickpeas. Mine were just drained and rinsed from a jar. And to the bowl, we're also going to add two bell peppers that have been chopped. We used a red one and an orange one just to vary up the colors in the salad. We're then gonna dice a third of a large cucumber, one medium tomato, also diced, a handful of Kalamata olives that are chopped, a sprig of green onion, also known as a scallion, thinly sliced, and a quarter cup of dried cranberries. You can add it whole or chop it up a bit like I'm doing here, whichever you prefer. By now the quinoa should be done cooking, so we're gonna set it aside and remove the garlic from the oven. And once it's cool enough to handle, we're gonna remove each clove and place it into a bowl. It's super soft, so it's gonna mash easily using a fork, and then we're gonna add the rest of the ingredients to make the dressing. We're gonna add the juice from two whole lemons, which is gonna make this dressing refreshingly zesty, two tablespoons of olive oil, one tablespoon of tahini, which if you can't find it at the store, we have a recipe on how to make it at home, link is in the description, a teaspoon each of soy sauce, and balsamic vinegar and onion powder and a sprinkle of freshly ground pepper. Give it a whisk and that's it. Once we've added the quinoa to the salad, we can then pour over the zesty roasted garlic dressing and toss everything to coat. 
At the end, I added half of a cup of coarsely chopped roasted almonds, along with some reserved dried cranberries and scallions for garnish. Like the previous recipe, this one can be enjoyed both warm or cold, and it can also be made in advance to enjoy in the coming days, so long as the dressing is stored separately from the salad. It's a refreshing, filling, but still light salad that's perfect for the warmer weather. The final recipe is this creamy spinach, mushroom, and coconut curry. It's just bursting with flavor. To make this, we're gonna first finely chop one medium onion and finely mince three cloves of garlic. We're then gonna peel a thumb-sized piece of ginger and finely mince it as well. To a large pot on medium-high heat, we're gonna add a couple of teaspoons of oil and then the onion, garlic, and ginger mixture. Give it a stir and let it cook for about three minutes. You can add a splash of water if needed to deglaze the pan. So while this cooks, we're gonna thinly slice about 15 small mushrooms. And back to the pot, we're gonna add two cups of cooked chickpeas and the mushrooms, giving it a stir and letting it cook for another five minutes. While this cooks, we're gonna thinly slice one red bell pepper, cutting it in half again lengthwise. And back to the pot, when the mushrooms have softened, we're gonna add the spices. A tablespoon of curry powder and half of a teaspoon of paprika powder. We're gonna saute this for about a minute to let the spices bloom, which brings out the flavor of the spices even more. And then we're gonna add a can of coconut milk. We used full fat, you can use reduced fat if you prefer. And then we're adding the red bell peppers and a bit of salt and pepper cooking it again for a couple more minutes. Meanwhile, we're gonna slice about two handfuls of cherry tomatoes, adding this to the pot at the very end along with four big handfuls of spinach. As you stir it in, cooking just for a little while longer, you're gonna start to notice the spinach is gonna start to soften. And when it's softened sufficiently enough, you can remove it from the heat. This dish is perfect to enjoy with some naan or rice. Here we use some whole grain red rice and serve it alongside a generous few scoops of the curry. To garnish, we used fresh cilantro, dried chili flakes, and a squeeze of lemon works really well for this one too. As with most curries, this one can be enjoyed right away, but the flavors are even more intense and bold when they've had some time to melt. So it's great to make a big batch of this one and store it to enjoy over the next couple of days. As always, you can find the full breakdown to all of the recipes on the blog, and those links are in the description box below. We always provide our recipes in both cup and tablespoon measurements, as well as gram and milliliter measurements, depending on which one you prefer. And each recipe comes with a downloadable PDF. You can find it just under the title for the recipe. And we've included that so that you can either print it off or refer to it on your tablet or on your phone when you're making some meals in the kitchen. Hopefully it makes your life a little bit easier. And again, I wanna take a brief moment to thank Wix for for partnering with us on today's video. I have been using Wix for the last two and a half years and I use their platform to create the entire Pickup Lime site that you now see. I think when it came to building a website, I really had no idea where to begin, but with Wix, they offer hundreds of these designer templates that you can choose from, so you're not starting from scratch. And so when I picked one, all I did was I changed the text, I swapped the pictures for some of my own, and I used their drag and drop features to move things around. And within a few days, the site was already up and running. And I think it's really nice to be able to keep creative freedom over your own website. So for example, we also send out emails to our newsletter subscribers every few weeks, and that whole feature is built right into Wix, which makes our lives a lot easier. So if you've ever been interested in creating your own professional looking website, I definitely recommend Wix. And the best part is it's completely free to try and for an unlimited amount of time. So if you think you might be interested in learning more, check out the link in the description box below. And I think that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thanks a lot for watching. Pickup Limes signing off and we'll see you in the next video.